Layer Zero is one of the most anticipated projects in crypto. In today's video, I want to run through a few major things to do with the Layer Zero airdrop. Is it too late to qualify for what could be one of the biggest airdrops in crypto history? If it is, how can you still make money from the Layer Zero ecosystem and how can you prepare yourself for an impending airdrop? Some of the indicators that I'm going to show you in today's video show us that a potential airdrop could be happening very, very soon. So if you've been following Layer Zero at all over the past couple of years, you should pay attention to today's video. So looking in front of us, it's clear that Layer Zero is one of the biggest projects in crypto just by sheer size in terms of how much they've raised. They raised $6.3 million to begin with, relatively humble beginnings, but still led by Multicoin Capital and Binance. But then they came in with massive backers in A16Z, Coinbase, and Amoka, Multicoin, and then actually Christie's uh, led their own funding round. And then they've had some massive funding rounds since then with $120 million raised at a valuation of three. $3 billion. So the latest raise that occurred on the 4th of April, 2023 indicates that layer zero is a $3 billion protocol. And look, when the token gets listed on the market, it's likely that it's worth even more than that in terms of the actual token price itself, because the raising value and the total market capitalization FDV uh, is a very different thing. For example, Arbitrum launched at like what, 12 bill FDV and they raised nowhere near that. Um, obviously investors need to make a return on investment, right? But what we do know is that for investors to get a return on investment, airdrops are one of the vehicles, so basically by launching a token, that the projects can essentially pay back its investors and pay back its stakeholders. So incentivizing these investors with the token is one of the major way that they attracted uh, this much liquidity and is also a way that they can bootstrap liquidity on the ecosystem to ensure the success of the Layer Zero protocol long term. And when you have an airdrop, obviously that means, especially with a big valuation, that there's going to be a slice of the pie given out to the community and the bigger the raise, the more the slice of the pie is going to be. And with Layer Zero being such a big protocol from a valuation perspective, it's no doubt that it could be when the airdrop comes, one of the biggest airdrops in crypto history, one of the biggest airdrops that we've ever seen. And this is one I've been preparing for for quite some time. You can see here I did my first full deep dive on, on Layer Zero back in October 2022, over one year ago now. If you've been farming this airdrop for over a year, you're in an amazing, amazing position. I actually mentioned it even before this uh, in the context of another thread which amalgamated a bunch of other airdrops as well and i also did a follow-up earlier in the year as as a last warning a last reminder and i also did videos on it on crypto banter at the time that you should highly consider going for the layer zero airdrop if you haven't already for the people that weren't already farming the airdrop so i hope i've prepared you guys for what could be a potential airdrop but if you haven't been farming the airdrop and if you've done nothing on layer zero, don't worry. Towards the end of this video, I'm going to show you a way that you can still make money in the ecosystem because there's going to be a massive amount of liquidity coming into the ecosystem once the airdrop takes place. Like Arbitrum, there were tons of opportunities on the protocol side. And there's actually a couple trades right now, which I believe are decent layer zero proxy trades, which I want to get into. But for the ones that are potentially looking at an airdrop, I'm sure you want to know when airdrop, well, we got some really interesting revelations over the last few days. It's funny, if you look at the poly market odds for a layer zero airdrop, if you go into the week, they spiked to an 84% probability based on the market's interpretation of the layer zero airdrop due to the fact that the SSL certificate was officially lodged. And we can see that the lodging issuers do show that a layer zero foundation common name was issued. Now, what an SSL is, is it's a digital certificate that authorizes authenticates a website's identity and enables an encrypted connection. Companies and organizations need to add SSL certificates to their websites to secure online transactions and keep customer information private and secure. We saw an SSL certificate application for Arbitrum the week before their airdrop announcement. We also saw the day before the airdrop announcement Arbitrum pump in terms of its poly market odds, enabling people to speculate on it beforehand. Um, so this obviously has led a lot of people to believe that a layer zero airdrop could be coming sooner rather than later. But it's been a bit of a saga on the day since we saw that swing in the poly market odds, because we've seen people out of the layer zero camp say that nobody actually manually triggered the lodgement of that certificate and that they thought it was an automated event, which is quite interesting. Um, but then again, Arbitrum did deny a lot of these things until they went live. So they may be stalling. They may have known about it. We, we don't have full transparency over what the team is doing here and what the team is up to. All we know is that things are 
are looking like there's going to be an airdrop, and Q4 has been touted for quite some time in terms of the period where we'd get an airdrop. And obviously, we're in November, um, heading into December. It's really, really close to a potential airdrop, if not the snapshot's probably been taken already, right? And if they do choose to delay, then 2024, Q1 could be a logical period for them to launch an airdrop. So CC2 summarized the current airdrop situation for Layer 0. He anticipates that this week, either they'll push a significant announcement that the snapshot occurred. This would indicate that an airdrop is coming soon. He said that the smartest minds that he talked to said waiting until at least Wednesday. So it's currently Tuesday, maybe Wednesday in some countries, depending on where you're watching it from. So that still hasn't happened yet. Um, the, he also said the other outcome could potentially be them not announcing anything beyond a usual chain and partnership integration. And potentially the airdrop happens either later in Q4 or so December, or maybe in the new year. If it is in the new year, it's unlikely they do it over the holiday period. It's more likely that they do it in late January or early February, in my opinion. But if we look at the poly market odds right now, the market is saying that it's roughly a 50-50 split versus whether or not there will be an airdrop. So that is fluctuating and it's interesting because there's a vehicle for speculation there if you do want to speculate on a potential airdrop. It could be within the next 10 days, possibly, uh, if the SSL certificate is an indicator like it was for Arbitrum. But I still think if you are in line for a layer zero airdrop, I wouldn't get your hopes up too much. If you did follow my airdrop guides, though, I think you're in an amazing position to get an airdrop. If you didn't follow follow those guides, I think there's maybe a possibility the snapshot isn't taken, but for me, it's not a high risk reward play anymore. Like you're better off because these guys have had years, your competition essentially have had years or over a year to build up trading volume, right? Uh, across Stargate, um, across, you know, bridging volume, frequency, all of that stuff. That's obviously going to play into who gets a big airdrop, right? If you're starting today, you're not going to have time unless you're a whale to build up that volume. And you're definitely not going to hit the frequency or the time components or the governance on the STG side, those components that could provide a little bit of nuance to benefit uh, loyal users of the laser ecosystem because they're cle clearly going to want to reward those guys too and try and knock out cyber wallets. So I think if you've missed it and you haven't been airdrop farming, I would turn my attention to some of the next biggest airdrops, a few that I could think of off the top of my head. You've got Starknet, you've got Linear, these kind of airdrops that I've done videos on. If you search up airdrops, Miles Deutsche Crypto Banter, uh, I'm sure lots of videos um, come up from my show because I've done guides in the past, but yeah, I would definitely turn my attention to focusing on those if you missed the layer zero airdrop. If you did miss it though, now let's talk about the ecosystem because here are where some interesting trades start to present themselves. So one, I think that the layer zero airdrop could act as stimulus for the overall ecosystem. You can see in front of you some of the key ecosystem dApps. But two, I think in the lead up to the airdrop, if people want to speculate on the layer zero token before the token is officially launched, then you're going to have to use ecosystem dApps as a proxy bet. So there's kind of two plays here. There's kind of a buy the rumor, Air, or airdrop trade heading into the airdrop. And then there is also like a, a concrete play on additional liquidity entering the ecosystem. Or maybe the layer zero token launches a, a little bit overvalued, right? And people try and play the proxies, the catch-up plays based on relative valuations because we don't quite know where layer zero is going to land in terms of its valuation, although I expect it to be probably a top 20, if not a top 10 protocol, given the fact it has a three bill valuation on the cap table, which is one of the biggest raises in crypto history in terms of val, alongside things like Starknet and Scroll, these other um, L2 type products, which are charging uh, massive, massive, massive valuations. So... The ecosystem is an interesting trade. Within the ecosystem, two tokens really stand out. Stargate being one of them, being pretty much your primary layer zero powered application. And Radiant as well, which is an application that gives you exposure to not only the layer zero ecosystem as they use layer zero to power their multi-chain borrowing and lending strategies, but also the Arbitrum ecosystem, which currently has its incentive grants taking place at the moment, as well as an underlying EIP narrative and Arbitrum staking, which just got proposed too. So I'm pretty bullish on the Arbitrum ecosystem at the moment. I'm bullish on layer zero. So Radiant becomes a decent proxy bet. So I have been uh, adding Radiant at some of these key levels. I've made two buys into Radiant around the mid range here at the 23 cent zone, bought a little bit more on the breakout here at 24. My next add up add zone will be after any major pullbacks. We are heading into a bit of resistance, but if we do get a market pullback, and I think Sheldon talked about that on his show, 
Radiance definitely one that that's on my watch list and I highly recommend if you haven't already you make a trading view watch list a buy list a trading list whatever to track the tokens that you're currently interested in because Radiant is definitely on mine and it's definitely one that I'm watching one that I talked about in yesterday's show and my weekly watch list on Twitter as well that I post every Monday so Radiant's one Stargate is actually the other one which hasn't actually moved up as much as Radiant so you can see from the bottom Stargate's moved up 44% actually they're pretty similar uh, and over the last few days radiance moved up 44 percent as well they've both moved up stargate probably hasn't had that massive thrust based on prior price action due to the fact that there is some impending supply overhang due to ftx radiant for that reason becomes my preferred play of the two but if you zoom out onto the weekly you can see stargate um although it has moved i mean it's still significantly down from highs and you could put radiant in the same category as well um, although it has made a significant push up from the bottom. It is now uh, coming into this major mid-range territory here if you want to draw out like major time frames on the weekly where you'd be drawing out your horizontal support uh, around this level at the 32 cent zone. So making its way into that area, that is the area that I'll target. Any sort of pullbacks back down towards range low, I think would be a great zone to load up for a potential targeting of this upper bound at the 32 cent zone, which I think eventually we will get to, in my opinion. So these two become decent proxy bets on layer zero if you haven't uh, got any exposure to the ecosystem, either through the applications or through the airdrop. One thing I'm doing for a token like Radiant specifically, because it's on the Arbitrum chain, I've been using Kyber AI to actually track the momentum for the token based on AI data. So if you go into Kyber AI, there's a link in the description below to sign up for beta access and you switch to the Arbitrum network, you click on Radiant Capital, you can actually see the momentum for Radiant. So when this ticks into bearish territory, that's when I'm going to start. So you see here when the Kyber score got super bearish at 26 cents, it ticked upwards and then it pumped to 28 cents. When we have reversals like this and we get sub 20 on the Kyber score, which is a metric that takes into account a bunch of on-chain analysis if that lines up with a broader market pullback that is one of the confluence indicators that i will use to buy more radiant so i'm monitoring kyber ai all the time you can create watch lists on kyber ai put all of the tokens that you're trading in there and you can use that to solidify your trading strategy so that's a good tip it gives you all sorts of on-chain analysis and data which is of course amalgamated into that kyber score which is based on machine learning but you've also got also a bunch of in-depth order flow type statistics like trading volume, net flow to whale wallets, etc. Centralized exchanges, number of transfers, all that really in-depth data that's going to help the on-chain sleuths, on-chain traders out there. So that's something I'm using with a link in the description below to access it if you haven't already. I want to give you an update on my Radiant bots as well. I've been doing a lot of trading bots recently. You've probably seen some of my trading bot videos. I want to give you a quick update on my Radiant uh, grid bot. So my futures DCA Martingale strategy is currently up 75%, so doing really, really well, up a PL of, of $200. It's a small test position for me, but nonetheless, pretty impressive PL. Wish I actually put my full size into this. Um, but I've just been, yeah, testing out bots. Radiant worked really well because it was within a range, um, and I, it got some nice averages while it was within this range. You see this range here, and then when it broke out, a lot of those cells got to execute, and that's why the PL really pumped on that one. And then you can also see I've got another grid strategy, a futures grid strategy, which isn't a martingale strategy, which basically alters the buy size depending on, um, yeah, if, if you go down, it kind of doubles up, martingale doubles every time and, and takes profit on the next grid. The futures grid is more linear, so it doesn't double, but this one's up $85 and 34%, one of my highest performing bots as well. So for me, a great way to get exposure to these trades isn't just through trading them on leverage, it's actually through setting up bots and setting up the parameters to trade buy and sell radiant within a certain range. When you get a breakout, um, you can actually execute on a lot of these orders. So if you're bullish on a token, setting up a long DCA grid bot is not a bad idea if you know what you're doing. I have a tutorial, which I'll link in the description to OKX grid bots. If you want to learn more about it and you're confused what the hell I'm talking about, I've done an entire video on this that will be in the description below that you can check out. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our official show partners, which is Smartex. If you are interested in earning passive income on any of the tokens listed on the AMM across Arbitrum, 
BNB base and polygon you can do so in the description below and get access to APRs of up to 60% on the SmartX platform and SmartX is really cool because they've engineered a way to drastically reduce the negative effects of impermanent loss if you go into their on-chain compare function you can actually see the performance of SmartX pools versus similar pools on other AMMs like Uniswap v3 and you can see for example the Arbitrum USDC pool is performing is performing a lot better in terms of impermanent loss Actually, it's in, in permanent gain versus the other pools. And this is because of the algorithm that SmartX has. So in the past, putting a stablecoin alongside a token that you like hasn't been the best because if the token pumps, it really limits your upside. Um, and it can also really screw you on the downside if the token moves significantly in price against the other asset. That's what impermanent loss is. With an application like SmartX, you can often get much better results where you can maintain the efficiency of the token that you're in, uh, the efficiency of the LP overall, because you'll be pairing it with another token, of course. There's many examples of this. The Matic USDC pools the same, much better performance overall, net performance 7.8% versus these other pools, which are much lower. You can see this as well on USDT, BNB. So all this is transparent. You can check out the on-chain uh, compare function on their website. And yeah, link in the description below if you want to deposit liquidity or swap um, or even stake some of your assets. So link in the description below to SmartX and also to the OKX video and also to Kyber AI if you want to check out some of the AI powered data that I've been referring to in this show. Hope you enjoyed today's show on Layer Zero. Hopefully it gives you a bit of info into how I'm trading it. Pretty bullish on Stargate and Radiant, especially if we get a pullback. Those will be tokens that I look at adding to. I am pretty excited for the Layer Zero airdrop as someone that's been involved in it for over a year. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait for the day. We may need to wait a little bit longer now, but I mean, we may even get to be surprised towards the back end of this week. So keep your eye out for that. And yeah, it's a super exciting time. We can actually see Layer Zero's trading already on the hyper liquid market. So it's an IOU contract, which enables you to buy it. So if you really want to buy it now, you can actually buy Layer Zero, but you won't actually own the token. It's an IOU. And often these are really overpriced and end up coming down significantly in price when the token actually launches. So... I will see you in the next show. Have a lovely rest of your day. Peace out.